Now one of the problems with being connected to shore power is that you can get stray currents which can cause all sorts of problems to corroding the metals of your prop shaft, your prop itself, uh, even if it's bad enough, uh, coming in and corroding your engine. to take crew on board once we finally get to Turkey we will be spending considerable amounts of time in marinas and of course we will be connected to shore power so we don't want to run that risk of stray currents while we're in marinas so we bought this this is a, uh, a galvanic isolator and it's a very simple piece of kit and all you have to do is cut your incoming shore power earth connection connect one half to here, connect one half to there, and then the earth runs through this device. So I've just had a quick look of places where we could install this. So if you look over here, I've taken the shore power panel off to have a look behind and see what's there. Now this unit is quite a big unit and I don't want to connect it to the hull, obviously, because that would be putting holes in the hull. There's really no room in here for this to be connected. So the idea of hiding it behind this panel has been taken off the table. That was one job I could do. <laughs> the other place to install it, of course, is where the shore power comes straight into the boat. And that is under this helm seat here. So our shore power comes in here and enters the boat at this point here. Now this will quite happily screw against that piece of wood there and be out of the way. Uh, so what we've got to do is we've got to disconnect this here, uh, strip out the earth wire, get the two connections to connect to here, and Bob's your uncle. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But remember, it's a boat job. <laughs> So now we've got our earth wire ready to be connected to the galvanic isolator. Obviously the live and neutral wire are going to be a little bit too long. So once we've got this fitted, then we can cut this a lot shorter and shorten down the live and neutral wire as well. Just so it makes it all nice and neat. Here in the boatyard, spring is showing its face. Let me show you the flowers that are starting to bloom. Hello little foxy girl, how are you? Hey? Hello Bobby. Oh, big stretch. You say hello to everyone, eh? Basically all I've done is split this outer sheath to expose the earth wire and then obviously just taped it back up with some electrical tape to protect the two wires that are still inside and then just um, cut the earth wire, crimped on the two little spades that come with the uh, galvanic isolator and now I'm just going to attach it and power up and Bob's your uncle. It's not the prettiest job in the world, but it is pretty straightforward and it will work and it will protect our metals once we are attached to shore power. Well, that's it. She's in and she's secure. All I'm going to do now is switch on the shore power and we'll be good to go again. Obviously, this is not going to help us while we're out on the hard. This is really only going to be beneficial when we're in salt water and uh, we have the potential for any, you know, straight currents to be running around the marinas.
smell that fresh coffee smell. Mm. And look what we've got for breakfast on Easter morning. Vegan chocolate peanut butter fudge and chocolate peanut butter fudge with crispy bits of bacon fried in maple syrup. That's for the bloke side of the camp. <laughs> Yeah, Happy Easter, love. You can't go wrong with that, can you? Chocolate and bacon. <laughs> well, it was something that you were talking about yesterday. Yeah, we saw a video about making shot glasses out of um, bacon strips um, and coating it with chocolate and then putting your favourite drink inside. But this is uh, good enough because we don't have any drink anyway, so... Yeah, wine wouldn't go with... No, wine, wine wouldn't yeah, always let's work. Let's try. Mmm. Mmm. It works. Mm. That is peanut butter, coconut oil, chocolate powder, a little bit of vanilla essence, and a pinch of salt, and that's it. It's absolutely yummy. And bacon! And bacon! <laughs> Good morning, people. In last week's video, one or two of you mentioned that the sacrificial anode shouldn't be this close to the cutlass bearing. It should be at least 50 centimetres away. And you are correct, it should be. And the only reason it's there at the moment is because this shaft is partly out of the hull. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take off the sacrificial anode, we're going to try and pull the shaft out completely and also have a look at the key that is inside and see how easy or difficult that is going to be to get off. So first things first, we're going to remove this. Ah, there we go, got it. Now we can see the key here on the end of the shaft, it's, it's one of the mechanisms that keeps it locked into place in the flange. Uh, the big problem is, of course, in order to pass through the cutlass bearing, we're going to have to remove this key. And I don't know how easy or difficult that's going to be. So first thing I'm going to do is, is clean all, all the shaft up, make it as smooth as possible, otherwise we're not going to get it through the cutlass bearing. Okay. So what are you going to use? I'm going to use Nikos's uh, little tools that he lends us. How's that working? Doing pretty good. Okay, so we've come up against a little bit of a snag. This key on the end of the prop shaft, I'm not sure how it is fitted or secured into the little notch. There is a, a small pinhole in the end of the prop shaft, which may or may not have a grub screw in there. Um, I'm going to have to find something to have a closer look inside there. Um, so maybe you could let us know how that key parts company with the prop shaft. <laughs> I've done some hand laundry in the studio apartment, so I've washed it and I've rinsed it. I'm bringing it back here to squeeze out the excess water from the mangle. So I haven't actually used it before, so we'll see how we go. An ideal system, this Baz. I need three hands. Why is it not tight? Why, why can't you tighten it? That's as tight as that. Little. 
got to be better than a hand squeeze, isn't it? You can't get it any tighter. Of course you can. Obviously you can, otherwise it wouldn't be moving. Well, maybe it's because it's... We looked at the mangle later to troubleshoot the problem. The plate on the end of the thumb screw isn't big enough to attach to this thin pulpit rail. So we've decided that we'll make something similar to this, which we use to mount the outboard engine with. And that way it will hold the mangle securely to stop it from moving forwards and backwards. My grandmother used to do this really well. <laughs> Oh, yay! I might put it through again, but I think it's a bit of a work in progress, but I can see the potential. <laughs> I'd just like to take this opportunity to offer a warm welcome to our newest patrons, Buck and Dania Buchanan. It's great to have you aboard, guys. Thank you. And an exceptionally big thank you to Heather and John Drummond, otherwise known as the Old Travel Bums, for your very generous donation. Thank you so much. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe and ding that bell so that you get notified of future video updates. We look forward to seeing you next week on Sailing ABC.